Captain Jerome. Uh, my name is Victor Chan. I'm class of 92. Uh, I'm happy to be a convener of TLM chapter. It's a newest chapter and I hope more of you will join us and for consequent events. Uh, so I look forward to meet you guys very soon. Uh, so unfortunately, because of COVID, we have to do the webinar, but we will do a physical event as soon as possible. So I'll see you soon. Um, I'm most grateful for our uh, Elma Mata DBS, especially to Headmaster George Shi. There's a lot of things that uh, he did for all, all of us, especially me, in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> at school, I hated uh, memorizing for exams, uh, but not learning. I love learning and I love sport and the arts. I graduated a below average student with uh, three uh, credits, uh, one in uh, uh, foreign student Chinese. Um, I was one of many privileged uh, with the uh, needy scholarship. Uh, most of my class, uh, C class, uh, happened, turned out to be on that uh, same scholarship, <clears throat> uh, which uh, George Shi, uh, headmaster, uh, uh, <clears throat> promoted. <clears throat> Our family emigrated to the U.S. in the 60s halfway through my form six, still a very bad student. My US education was a different matter. At Berkeley, my grades shot up and I scored the highest IQ test in two and a half years, much to everybody's surprise, especially mine. But my studying philosophy is the same. Understanding, I, I like, but I don't like memorizing. Uh, but still, my grades went up very quickly. At UCLA, <clears throat> I scored the top score in the PhD physics qualifying exam. Also, much to my surprise and to everybody's. <clears throat> As a teaching assistant, my thoroughness and commitment to uh, the students' learning uh, was um, very impressive to some professors at the, so um, uh, to everybody's surprise, I was made assistant professor at Cal State University without a PhD, actually only four years uh, into graduate school. Uh, I taught there and later on at USC for four years while finishing my uh, PhD degrees. As a physicist, a little bit of misspelling there. I um, was promoted to a senior physicist at Hughes Research Lab pretty uh, quickly. And I pioneered certain high power laser technology for fusion energy, you know, clean energy production using laser um, uh, uh, for fusion. Uh, and I co-authored the laser handbook published by North Holland in 79. Um, and uh, uh, unfortunately, my success uh, in high energy uh, technology was uh, quickly taken by the military and uh, for use in, uh, you know, in, in <clears throat> strategic um, warfare. <clears throat> I invented, that's why I decided to leave uh, uh, laser altogether. I invented the Dahan folding bike uh, 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 in 1982, or before, several years working in the garage. Uh, we filed over 450 patents uh, on bikes, bicycles and related areas. Many of these patents have become standard in the 10 million units folding bikes sold worldwide today. I've been in the business for almost 40 years. So it's um, almost like um, uh, 12 per patents a year on the average. <clears throat> we at first built and market our folding bikes from Taiwan and Holland factory uh, for about 10 years. I moved to China in 19, uh, 1993 
At one time, our factory were a thousand strong workers. Um, <clears throat> and uh, some of our patents nowadays are into regular bikes, components, and so on. We have started uh, a thing called Sharing 360 program about uh, 12 years ago, in which we share technology, our own brand, double branding, uh, bike, and bike sharing. Uh, this is actually a uh, second time uh, around because uh, IPR protection was uh, almost uh, non-existent before and became stronger now with uh, Xi Jinping uh, in, in the realm, in the, on, in the, on the helm. And um, what are these? Technology means a sharing of our parts that we use selling to them or co-designing with them. Sharing brand means co-branding uh, so that uh, their brand and our brand, let's say ABC, Dahan or Dahan ABC. And uh, uh, bike sharing uh, means uh, I have a program uh, yet to be um, uh, yet to be uh, used uh, in which we use um, um, cabinets uh, with uh, small um, <clears throat> uh, cubicles to, to uh, store foldable uh, bikes or, um, or um, scooters uh, that you go around and store it uh, for charging and for other kind of, for, for fees collection and for other kinds of uh, uh, important uh, information collecting. Um, the, uh, there's another sharing, I forgot. There's one, two, three, and the four is uh, um, we are, uh, you know, uh, going, we are, we're, we are scheduled to go public in uh, 2023. 20, and a number of our uh, suppliers are uh, also uh, going public together, and that would uh, strengthen our contribution to, uh, uh, to the industry. Sharing 360 uh, received very um, high uh, attention from the bike industry and the bike, uh, All China Bike Association, and that we receive a lot of uh, support from them um, in terms of PR and other kind of programs. Right now, there are uh, already uh, 30 some uh, companies, uh, um, mostly in China, but not but also in, among five nations uh, uh, enjoying the uh, sharing 360 in terms of technology, co-branding, uh, uh, and in terms of uh, uh, going public. Uh, in two years, we have already signed up uh, and received uh, um, uh, uh, licensing entry, entrance free fee, entrance fee of uh, um, uh, almost 30,000 um, uh, 30 million uh, RMB. And uh, in sharing uh, our brand, they would have to they pay us 5% uh, of retail. And so uh, the sharing program is widely received and we are able to uh, share uh, what we got and uh, they share with us uh, what they got in terms of uh, management, in terms of um, um, <clears throat> market uh, occupation, uh, and in terms of financing. So the program has been a success and uh, uh, it's, a, it's an important part of our business. In the near future, we, uh, of course, are planning to go public. And there's a question uh, that Murphy posted to me last time we were here. Uh, what about uh, management in China? <clears throat> well, you know, Management in China is really a challenge because it is so different from the, uh, the rest of the world. I think every country is different. When you go to a new country, a new, well, not new country, but a, from Hong Kong as a new, new territory, at least, uh, where the cultures are different uh, and uh, social uh, norms are different. Uh, there are many, many things uh, one should learn. Uh, uh, you are moving across uh, you know, laterally across the culture, but you're also moving vertically because chances are you're an entrepreneur, you haven't 
learn a lot of the management skills that uh, uh, maybe your, your, your father uh, learned. And so there is a uh, translation um, um, vertically and uh, laterally. <clears throat> now, fortunately, there are many qualified consultants in China, some very good and some not so good. But it's up to you to interview and choose the right one. You, you can learn about internal management. Um, and it's already, in many cases, uh, pretty advanced for a lot of industries uh, in China, uh, international level, or maybe even higher. And you, you learn about marketing. How do you sell domestically and internationally? And what about brand uh, marketing? That's also something that managers, management consultants can, can help us. And there's also design and technology, especially uh, design. Technology, you have to do it uh, yourself it, with, with your team. Uh, but uh, design, you know, uh, 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 advertisement design, um, you know, uh, appearance design, there are uh, uh, product, de product uh, development, uh, product design, there's plenty of good ones uh, uh, in and around China. You can hire them uh, digitally. You don't have to, especially nowadays with so many stay people staying at home, they work part-time or full-time and giving your, your first draft the work over in terms of advertisement or product design. There's plenty of service and uh, very, very cost effectively. But also there are major, uh, major designers, design houses you can, you, can, you can work with as well. <clears throat> Basically, I like to say, um, he who receives more should give back more. That's a paraphrase from Jesus. <laughs> I don't remember the exact uh, uh, words, but that's the idea. I think most of us from DBS are privileged, uh, either from our family and from education and most everything. We are very privileged, and I am among them. So, therefore, I am. People ask me, uh, how come you're so, uh, you're 80, you should retire a long time ago? Uh, no, I, I, the Lord gave me um, good health, and I should give back uh, 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 to society. The key to happiness and longevity, in my opinion, is to exercise your body, mind, and soul. Uh, uh, body is that's exercise your body. That's very obvious. Exercise your mind. Don't retire and do nothing. Exercise your soul means your heart. You have to live according to your conscience, according to what you believe is right. You exercise body, mind, and soul. You'll be happy, and you'll be uh, you you have a, a healthy life. Uh, if you if you are idling around, uh, sorry, maybe the Lord will ask you to come home. We don't want that yet. Uh, so uh, that's my short speech. Um, uh, any <laughs> Q&A? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Han. I think there is some question posted on the, um, the chat board. Hold on a second. Let me just shut that down first. Okay. Uh, brother in Hong Kong, can you please uh, show us the questions on the other side or on the net? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Any questions for Mori um, Siheng? Dr. Dr. David Hong, thank you. Um, so do we have any questions that we can bring to the table? Oh, we, we have some questions, we have some questions. 
This, this is from an anonymous attendee. <laughs> I know it is. Hi. Do you think the upbringing makes uh, do you think the upbringing during your DBS years played an, any part in your strong performance in your PhD? If so, can you please elaborate? Dr. Han. Uh, yes, very much. DBS is a um, uh, very well-known and well-run uh, uh, <clears throat> Uh, school. Uh, I did not get a good grade uh, because I did not uh, um, subscribe to uh, the popular belief in getting a good grade. Um, uh, but uh, I did not get any kind of a uh, discrimination from anybody, uh, especially the teachers. And, um, <clears throat> and I learned, but I um, didn't want to uh, memorize anything. That's my uh, stubbornness. And I think this stubbornness and the eye-opening ex you know, uh, uh, experience with knowledge at um, DBS uh, from all the teachers, uh, some of them are very, very good. Others are so-so. But still, I felt I learned a lot about the world, uh, the, the intellectual world and the world. Uh, and, and that gives me the um, um, starting uh, impetus to do well in college. Mm. Although I did not give up my uh, uh, principle of learning before uh, scoring high, high grades. <clears throat> yes. And I also uh, was very um, uh, touched at the time and uh, given a strong impression by, the, uh, by George Shi, uh, Reverend George Shi, headmaster, uh, who uh, whose uh, long long term service to the to the society, including uh, being agreeing to being the headmaster of uh, DBS, uh, his history uh, uh, really impressed me as uh, what a person uh, should be. So yes, very much. <clears throat> Hi, uh, Dr. David Hong. Thank you for your very inspiring speech. And uh, uh, honestly, I want to follow your footsteps. I hope I can. But anyways, I got, I got a question. Um, I want to ask, um, what's your biggest challenge? Like, is there a time that you fell and you want to give up? And can you kind of like tell us your story, how you climb back up from that kind of <laughs> like the lowest point of your life? Well, you know, uh, in business, it's always up and down. It's, that's normal. But uh, in my mind, I never attempted to, or I thought about giving up because I know or I knew what I was doing was right. And it's uh, uh, for, for green mobility. You know, bicycles and e-bicycles are good for uh, green mobility and therefore energy conservation and therefore uh, uh, carbon. Uh, footprint conservation. So since if I believe something is right, then uh, it's not a question of giving up. You should keep doing it. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Han. Uh, I guess I have my own, I have one question that I would like to ask myself, Dr. Han. Um, Dr. Han, you are a, you are an entrepreneur, innovator, and Inventa. Um, many people in Hong Kong, many brothers, including myself, uh, we may have a lot of different ideas, different so-called inventions in our minds, uh, but we always get troubles or we find difficulties turning that into a real business. Or how do you actually um, um, materialize, or as I say, turn a certain idea into a business opportunity? Especially, how do you do it in China? You know, with such a market, with such a big market, a lot, a lot of people wants to do business in China. It's just that we don't know how to do it. Can you share someone? Thank you. <clears throat> well, uh, I was privileged to, uh, in my growth year, to uh, to stick to my principle of learning and not to scoring high grades. And I think, as a kid, uh, moving around, doing things. 
uh, more or less on, on his own, uh, helps a person to be uh, creative uh, and materializing uh, his thoughts and ideas. That helps. And, but in China, I think it important, it's important if we want to go into business to really try to consult with some good consultants uh, because they're, the business part is more difficult than the uh, uh, manufacturing part. And the manufacturing part is more difficult than the invention part. So uh, we, we should uh, acquire uh, helps from whatever source we can. Uh, and uh, that can, uh, that can uh, sometimes help us to, uh, uh, you know, uh, have a straight path. Thank you, Dr. Han. Mm -hmm. uh, get save it, save it one. You got a questions? David, David Wong, Gaoling Dalo, you have a question? Okay, so uh, maybe I should uh, just refer a question from uh, class of 70, uh, LNM Dalo. Uh, here is a question Could you tell your C dice how? Doing business in the PRC have changed over the last 20 to 30 years. And what do you see are the major advantages for Hong Kong residents in setting a business in China? Okay, very good uh, question. Um, China has changed a lot in the last 20, 30 years during the time that I was here. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, legislation and uh, uh, enforcement of the law, that is very, very important. Uh, for Hong Kong residents uh, in terms of everything uh, related to business. Number two, uh, education has really uh, become uh, 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 widespread and there's a lot of graduates. Even the Song San Siu Dai, many of them have college degrees. <laughs> and and, and uh, uh, you can find all kinds of um, you know, uh, uh, majors, uh, specialization. However, most of them do not have the uh, business culture that, uh, that uh, you might prefer, uh, you know, uh, as a Hong Konger. But you have to go through an education process uh, to bring them up slowly uh, until, um, you know, I think um, uh, for Hong Konger, uh, there are a chance, uh, there are many chances because if you can master the uh, local uh, culture, business culture, you have a lot of advantage because you understand the, the outside world a lot more than most people. Um, and so I think um, um, if you coming in as a strict, uh, a strict uh, manufacturer, maybe not so, not, not so great uh, uh, as comparatively to locals. But if you're talking about um, export business, doing something uh, either by yourself or in relation with other local producers and marketing overseas, I think uh, Hong Kong has an uh, obvious advantage in terms of language and culture and even contacts. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Han. Thank you, Dr. Han. Uh, next question goes to uh, Brother James. James, can you please bring up your uh, video and uh, unmute yourself, please? James, brother James. Okay. Uh, all right, I guess we'll move forward to the next questions. Um, okay, I uh, got a question from Steve Chen. The question is, why have you been interested in folding bike then after leaving Hughes? And any meaning for use of the Han as brand name? I guess that's obvious. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, my brother and I um, started the business together 
and uh, uh, my name is in Cantonese Hon Duk Wai, and his name is Hon Duk Hang. So we have a middle name of Duk. No, in Mandarin is kind of like the. So we at first uh, had our name as Han, H O N, Han uh, uh, bikes, bicycles. But then we were sued by the famous uh, furniture company Han, H O N. <laughs> and uh, even though the chance of them winning is remote, but I don't want to uh, you know, raise a lot of money to fight them. So we changed our name to the Han. For me, especially, uh, privilege because uh, David is my English name, so uh, it's kind of like uh, my my name. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, all right. The next question comes from uh, Lawrence, Lawrence Kwan. Uh, big thanks for your time and also a fan of the Han folding bike. You mentioned about green energy before and electric vehicles seems the direction where the carbon fuel will be replaced. Is there any plan of Dahan to take this idea and to extend into bicycle, say with uh, electronic scooter? Yeah, in fact, uh, we have uh, already uh, gotten into uh, that uh, area and uh, well received um, overseas and domestically. Yes, electric bikes and also electric trikes we are uh, doing a, a project on. All right, looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Um, all right. Aha. Um, a question from a young brother, uh, Yu Wing Kin, all right. Um, a class of uh, 18, 2018, very young brother, current engineering student at Imperial College. What were your aspirations during your undergraduate studies at UCB? How did that change over the years? And what were you thinking when you left Hughes? Did you have a plan B? Plan B? And how did you deal with uncertainty, especially financial, in starting a business? Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, I uh, got into uh, bikes because, of, well, first of all, my premise in life, uh, to borrow a phrase, is to serve the people. That may sound a little uh, <laughs> unbelievable, but that's how my parents taught me uh, and what your she indirectly taught me uh, to serve the people. And because we receive a lot from the, the society, uh, let's say for me, my parents, they, they, are, they, are, they, are, they, they, they have left us and your she left us. We cannot... Uh, I, uh, uh, re, uh, uh, compensate them for their uh, kindness. So the only way is that there's a lot of my parents, a lot of Joshi's headmasters. So by contributing to society is a, the only way to answer them. Um, that's one, one question. The other question is, um, uh, well, uh, outside of that, so my first uh, uh, thing was, uh, of course, to do laser fusion which uh, I did and then contributed to it. But as that became um, uh, a, 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 a infeasible at that time, uh, so I switched to something that more uh, uh, practical, more pragmatic, low tech, yes. But to me, low tech, high tech is the same, <laughs> is no big difference. Just do something useful for society. As far as the financial uncertainty, yes, there was financial uncertainty, but um, uh, I feel that uh, um, if, you, if you do the right thing, somehow, you know, like Joshi used to say, God helps those who help themselves. And I think it, <laughs> it, it materialized. All right. Thanks, Dr. Han. I think we've got one from uh, Mr. Eric Morris. Mr. Morris. Mr. Morris asks, hello, Dr. Han, this is Evan Morris, 1990. Mm -hmm. Looking back on your very successful career, what are one or two things you did right and one or two things you would have done differently? Uh, you mean, bang on my very successful career. Okay, um, <clears throat> well, uh, number one, I uh, really pay too much attention to product development 
and pay less develop, uh, time on uh, marketing and especially internal management. Uh, I uh, also did not pay attention to building a uh, network of friends in the industry. So if I started over again, I would spend a lot, lot of time outside and at uh, dinner tables and uh, also <laughs> <laughs> with a lot of uh, attention, you know, uh, 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 paid to uh, what the consultants uh, uh, told us to do in terms of internal management. Right now, our uh, internal management is pretty good, even by consultants uh, standard. And but that's uh, learning it the long way. I should have uh, uh, been smarter in those areas that I mentioned. Well, that's that's words of wisdom. Spend more time at the dinner table. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, why don't we uh, switch our um, um, uh, conversations to a little um, more relaxed ones? Uh, okay. I did mention at the very beginning that I would like to uh, get uh, Dr. Han to share a little bit more about the uh, old school life. Yeah. Maybe in the yeah. 50s, yeah. right? Uh, can you, you know, maybe tell us a couple, you know, uh, fun stories or something yeah. that you find that interesting? Yeah, well, you know, those days were very different. And that's how many years ago? Uh, about 60 years ago. Uh, almost. Um, and um, of course, the economic condition is very poor. And uh, a lot of people from China uh, as refugees and their kids having a uh, little chance to, to education or even to, to um, you know, to, to have a good uh, diet. And um, my family is the same way. I lived in uh, uh, a uh, illegal uh, hut um, with my family on top of somebody's uh, building illegally. And uh, uh, all the three years I attended DBS, as a matter of fact. Um, and um, uh, so when I was accidentally, I don't, know ex I don't know how to explain, other than the fact that I did well in s uh, sport and in music and uh, 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 painting. And I, I think those things were uh, uh, stood out in, in the in Hagalo's mind, Hagalo was commissioned to do the here. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, uh, so I got in from uh, from uh, you know directly from a uh, third rate school, in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> so, um, so uh, I I think one of my qualifications I live around the school, Sayi uh, Kai, uh, uh, which is about two blocks from from the school. And so, uh, anyway, I got there. So it was very, very. Uh, uh, dis there's a lot of disparity uh, between me and the rest of the students. And uh, my class was um, constituted uh, by Joshi's direct commission, uh, commission to get one extra ban per level. Students are too rich, ritzy. He doesn't like that. It's not going to get an education. So bring a, a lot of poor kids in. Uh, that would uh, dilute the situation and, and normalize uh, the environment. Uh, uh, so we have a C class. Uh, they're brought in for each each form, and um, uh, some of those um, uh, students actually have done quite well later in life, and um, and I think uh, it has it did uh, kind of dilute the uh, ritzy spirit, and so now I have a personal uh, story to tell that was really uh, quite incredible. I now we had to uh, wear blue blazers uh, for for winter. My my mom uh, bought some cl um, cloth from an Indian in uh, a shop in Neidunto, pretty big one. And that uh, rascal shortchanged me uh, or us so that the cloth was not in a to my 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 mother my mother was a good seamstress uh, to make a blazer. So he 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 made a she made a uh, uh, jacket for me. So I wore a blue jacket to school, and uh, a lot of the um, fellow students thought that was pretty cool. Looks 
a bit like Jane Steen. So they also started to wear uh, blue jackets, including the leather ones. After a month or so, um, Joshi in a, in a morning thing uh, got uh, kind of incensed about it. And he said, we're a school for little gentlemen, but not for little affairs. So from tomorrow on, uh, go back to the blue blazer. And, uh, and everybody looked at me as the, this troublemaker. But after the, after the uh, morning um, gathering, we went back to school. And the head prefect, forgot his name now, nice guy. He came to see me, uh, uh, wave at me. So I came out and they were, well, we da tang la, da tang la. <laughs> so where is he? And he said uh, to me, said, uh, I don't worry. Uh, blazer. So I wore that blazer, uh, that uh, not blazer, but uh, that jacket for, for the rest of the winter or the year as, uh, um, before summer sets in. And so that was a really uh, very unique experience that I had as a young person uh, went through. And that's how fine Joshi um, treat the students as a, as a teacher. The other thing I was very impressed was one time <clears throat> a history teacher, an Australian, uh, he had to, um, <clears throat> go to go to school, I mean, go to a hospital. And Joshi stood in as a, uh, in, you know, as a uh, substitute. Uh, <clears throat> then the history thing came to uh, the Opium War. And he said, the Opium War is not needed uh, for the uh, school cert. But anybody with any Chinese blood must know about the Opium War, or it will repeat on you. So he went on to uh, talk about the Opium War in great detail and moving a lot of people to, to, uh, to tears. <clears throat> and uh, those things are very impressive to young youngsters, <clears throat> and including me. So, great, thank you. So, um, not, a, not a troublemaker, but a trend maker. <laughs> All right. Um, I guess next questions, uh, we got Billy, Billy Tang. Hello. Thank you, Dr. Hong. Hi. It's a great pleasure to have you uh, here this evening. Okay. My uh -huh. question is, uh, apart from business, do you still remember what is your house? Oh, what house? A good man house. Ooh. Good man. Oh. Oh. Good man. Okay. Yo, yo, yo. Okay. Good, good, good. Okay. Yo, I was, a, okay. I was that's, swimming that's captain for good man house. Okay. And next time when you come to Hong Kong, please let us know. Okay. We at uh, DSOBA would like to have a... Uh, very good dinner with you, okay? okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Well, okay, next um, question. <laughs> well, actually, I um, uh, also learned that Dr. Hong was a choir singer. So I have already successfully um, uh, recruited Dr. Hong to sing for our next uh, World Choir Games. I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next questions. All right, so we're gonna have the last two questions, okay? Uh, before we conclude our webinar today. Um, all right. Let me see. That's a, okay, apologize, guys. Ooh. Okay. Okay, so we got a we got a question from David Wong, class of ninety. Uh, Doctor Han, David Xiheng, what are your ideals and how do you define success? Well, I I think I already mentioned my ideals um, uh, to serve the people. Uh, um, my definition of success is do your best uh, and uh, let God take care take care of the rest. Okay. 
Oh, actually, there's some more from Lee Wong. Uh, what do you think are the key characteristics of successful entrepreneurs? And what's Dehan Dahan's strategy in dealing with competition and differentiate itself from the rest? Well, I think uh, to be an entrepreneur, you have to be idealistic and a little bit crazy um, because uh, competition is very stiff, uh, especially when you're starting out because you don't know uh, much about uh, <laughs> anything. So uh, you have to be determined and you, you have to have an ideal uh, target. Um, about the competition, I think the best way are really well, again, those three things, um, uh, product development, um, internal management, which uh, means quality, and marketing. And uh, uh, if you do those three things well, you will, uh, uh, you know, differentiate yourself. Okay, great. Thank you, Dr. Han. I guess uh, we will conclude this uh, Q&A section. I'll pass time back to the Hong Kong uh, group. Uh, for Joe Go to say some last words. Thank you. Hong Kong? China passing back to you, Hong Kong? Thank you so much, Dr. Hong, for enlightening us such a, your, your history. I mean, it's just amazing. Thank you so much for sharing with us uh, the old boys for everything. Thank you so much. My great um, pleasure. Thank you. So I think uh, um, we will end this uh, webinar. And uh, I want to thank Murphy for lighting this up uh, with Dr. Hong. And I want to thank my conveners that they're all here. Uh, so hopefully we will do another um, trade, logistic, and manufacturing um, chapter event soon. Hopefully we'll be face to face. That'll be great. So, and Dr. Hong, I, I love to meet you in Shenzhen or in Hong Kong. If you come to Hong Kong, please do let us sure. know, okay? Please do. Sure. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Okay, Murphy, back to you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Chogo Chogo. Actually, we got some souvenirs uh, from DSOBA to present to Dr. Hong as a token of thanks. It is our 100th anniversary uh, DSOBA stamp set. Dr. Hong? How was that? Yes, uh, uh, thank you. Uh, Dr. Hong, as you know, this is our um, 100th anniversary for DSOBA this year. So this stem, stem, uh, stamp set is um, uh, nicely correlated uh, by our brothers. And uh, Murphy will present it to you now. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So there's a, a 100th anniversary batch that comes with the... Uh, to the stamp wow. set. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you so much. We'll, we'll have uh, more TLM um, activities uh, as we go along, hopefully, <clears throat> COVID, whatever. But thank you so much for joining tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Take care, brothers. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hong. Bye-bye.